Oh, hello there. I was just finishing up a little painting of mine. Would you like to see it? Hey, did you know that the fear of the number 666 is called hexacosioi, hexaconta, hex, a phobia? What a stupidly long word for such a simple number. A number cloaked in fear and religious superstition often used in movies, politics, metal bands, and sometimes even as shitty tattoos. But what does it really mean, 666? Described as the number of the beast, the biblical opponent of God in the end times, the devil's number. But what if I was to tell you that 666 might not be the dark and evil number that we believe it is today? Well, flip your crosses and let's take a journey back through history. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. This verse from Revelations describes a beast who would rise up against Christ during the world's final holy war, and the number of this beast? 666. That's according to this King James Bible from the 20th century, almost 2,000 years after the New Testament was written. But back in the early days of Christianity, far before the invention of the printing press, only a few copies of Holy Scripture existed, and were left in the possession of trusted scholars to be translated and recopied by hand, leaving the writings vulnerable to translation errors and rewording edits, which, whether by mistake or on purpose, were a common occurrence. The result of these translation typos was that many early versions of the Bible showed discrepancies with one another, such as the number of the beast being 666. In fact, in the 5th century Greek manuscript, the Codex Ephraimi Rescript, as well as ancient Latin and Armenian versions, the number is instead written as 616, not 666. Many Christian theologians and translators knew about the number 616 appearing in previous existing copies of the scripture, but having doubts about the numerous scribal errors, chose to use 666 instead. Some scholars theorize that the reason for choosing 666 to replace 616 was due to its resemblance to other biblical numbers like 777, considered to be the perfect holy number, and 888, which is the Greek number for Jesus. Or because 666 is a triangular number, being the sum of the first 36 numbers. Basically, 616 was just too drab, as 666 was a much sexier number, and just had that ring to it, you know? So then, which number is the actual number of the beast? Well, the answer to that may have been discovered in 2005. We'll get back to that. But first, let's talk about Caesar. There's an ancient Assyro Babylonian Greek cipher called Gematria, which assigns numerical value to words, names, and phrases. It was believed that the numerical value of a word or phrase bore some relationship to the number itself, or other words and phrases with identical values. Gematria was often used to calculate the numerical value of biblical verses or names of political figures, such as first century Roman Emperor Nero Caesar. According to some historian accounts, Nero Augustus Caesar was considered a tyrant. He was said to be compulsive and corrupt, labeled an enemy of mankind, and if you recall from my video on the Upside Down Cross, ruled over Rome when St. Peter was crucified. Crucified. I mean, this guy was a real jerk. And well, it just so happens that by applying the Gematria cipher to the Greek and Armenian translation of Nero Caesar, you get a set of numerical values that add up to 666. Son of a bitch. So many theologians believe that the number was used as a manner of speaking against the emperor without the Roman authorities knowing. Others theorized that Revelations was directly referring to Nero as the beast who would rise up to oppose Christ. But scholars generally agree that Revelations predicts events to come in the future, not the past. And since Revelations was written after Emperor Nero committed suicide, these theories are often dismissed. Now not all religious branches associate 666 with the mark of the beast. Many hold unique interpretations for the number and phrase alike. English occultist Aleister Crowley used 666 heavily in his founded religion called Thelema. Referring to himself as the Beast 666, which he described as a solar number, Crowley would also incorporate the 6x6 magic square associated with the sun, the sum of all the box numbers equaling 666. Christian futurists view the mark of the beast to be the rise of a supranational currency, for example the euro, which they believe signifies the mark given to all people without the seal of God, as told in Revelations chapter 13. 
In Kabbalistic Judaism, 666 represents the perfect creation of the physical world, said to have been created in six days, with six cardinal directions, and that the three-time repetition of the number represents affirmation and strength of that concept. Idealist Christianity perceives the number as non-literal, and that 666 isn't exclusively associated with the mark of the beast, but should be understood to represent it in the context of the scripture. Well, if you ask me, all of these interpretations are pretty retarded. To put so much belief and meaning behind a single number just seems foolish, especially one which may not even be the right number at all. Which brings us back to how early translations of the Bible show discrepancies between whether the number of the beast was 666 or 616. As mentioned before, many early versions of the Bible described the beast's number to be 616, which some translators rewrote as 666. But around 2005, a fragmented manuscript of the New Testament written in Greek was discovered on a piece of papyrus, which is pretty much ancient toilet paper. It contained parts of the Book of Revelations and dated back to the 3rd century, making it the oldest known manuscript of Revelations. And on this piece of papyrus, the number of the beast is given as 616, leaving some scholars to regard 616 as the original number. So then what can be said about 666 and all of the centuries of fear and superstition associated with it? Can it be that those who believe everything in the Bible is true might have been misled and lied to by early translation errors? And if so, what else written in the Bible might have been changed over the years to fit the convenience of the new language or to agree with the current social political pressures of their time? Perhaps, and just perhaps, The Bible as we know it today is just an arbitrary collection of stories from long, long ago. And no more than that. 616. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. I'm coming back. I will.